String variables and constants are based on the string class. And we've talked about how classes have properties, methods, and events. So we want to look at some of the properties and methods of the string class and how you might use those in your programming. So I've created a variable called campus, which is a string data type. And I placed in it the value of South Mountain as a literal string. So the first property we want to look at is length. So I can use length to find the number of characters in a string. So here I've created a variable called numchars, a type integer, and it's going to equal campus.length. So getting the length of campus, which if we were to count these, there are 14 characters in the phrase South Mountain. A really useful method of strings is index of. Remember, you can always tell methods by they have parentheses after the name. And inside those parentheses may be some arguments or parameters. In this case, index of has a search string. So this is a string uh, argument. And then a optional start value, which is an integer value, telling it where to start in the string. So the first one, I have location one as an integer. So this return index of returns an integer, equals campus.index of, and then uppercase m. And the value of location one is six. And the reason for that is with indexes, we start counting with zero. And so the S of South Mountain is index zero. O is one, U is two, and so forth. So the uppercase M is at index six, even though it's the seventh character. So the next one, int location two equals campus.index of, and I can give it a whole string. It's gonna look for that string. And so it finds that string first at location one or index one. So location two in this case is the value of one. That's where it starts. My next example, we have an integer called location three. Kind of the same thing, campus.index of, we're looking for OU again, but then I added the second optional parameter and I specified four as the start value. So it's gonna look for OU starting at index four. So we'll start here at the H and we'll go find the first OU. Well, the OU here is location seven or index seven. Then I have another one in location four equals campus.index of, and I'm looking for uppercase th. Now this, the index of property is case sensitive. And so in this case, it doesn't find uppercase t, uppercase h. It doesn't exist in this phrase. And if it doesn't find it, then the returned value is a minus one. We can use that to do a search maybe for a word in a, in a block of text and seeing if it exists there, and if it doesn't, it will return a minus one. We might use that in an if structure to do something if it can't find the word. We also have a to upper and a to lower method, and these simply change the value of the string to all uppercase or all lowercase. This comes in really handy when you want to compare strings. As we look in the next week lessons in terms of doing conditionals, we want to compare two strings and string comparison is case sensitive. So if the case is different, then they are not equal to each other. In this case, we can also use it if I'm looking for a, t a letter M, but I don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase. I want to find the first M. And so what you might do here is in location five equals, I'm going to take campus I'm gonna convert campus to all lowercase. So now it is South Mountain all lowercase. And then dot index of, I'm looking for the lowercase m, which in this case would be six. Even though up here in my original string, it is an uppercase m. So we can combine these values to make different types of runs in terms of looking for information. Another really useful method in strings is substring. Substring lets us extract part of the string based on a starting index and the number of characters. And that number of characters is an optional value. In my first example, I have a string variable called my sub. It's going to equal campus.substring2, comma 3. And the result is UTH. So how does it get that? 
Well, it goes to index two, which is the U, and it's going to return three characters, UTH. Second example here, my sub two equals campus substring six comma five. Well, index six is the M of mountain. Five characters is going to be M-O-U-N-T. So mount is the value of sub two, my sub two. My sub three, campus.substring four. Now here I didn't specify the number of characters. So that, that second parameter is optional. If we don't specify it, it goes to the, to the index where it's going to start, the starting index number, and it's going to go to the end of the string. So in this case, campus.substring four equals H space mountain. We'll talk about arrays in a few weeks. And so we can use the square brackets with a, an integer value after our string name. And what this does is it pulls out that one letter at that location, at that index, in this case would be index nine would be an N, and it puts it in a character or a char uh, data type. So I have a variable called my char, char data type, equals campus sub n or index n. So here's another way we might use these things in parsing out words. So we have our string South Mountain. I want to separate this into two separate words as two different variables. So what I want to do is find the location of the space. So I simply know that my string is two, two words. It could be any two words. It could be a cougar. It could be a really long first word and a short second word. All I need to do to separate these out is to find out where that space is. So I created a variable called space lock of type integer equals campus dot index of, and what I'm looking for is the space. So it's quote space quote. And what that's going to return into space lock is the value five. That's the location of our space. Then I have another string variable called word one. It's going to equal campus dot substring. And here I'm going to take the very first character, zero, and the number of characters I want is that space lock. Since space lock starts counting with zero, but the number of characters starts counting with one, this gives us five characters. S-O-U-T-H of south. That becomes my word one. Same way for word two. I create a string variable called word two equals campus.substring. Here I'm simply going to take space lock dot one. So the location of my space goes to the next character, which in this case would be six. And I didn't specify a length or number of characters, so it's going to go to the end. So it takes that last word, or that second word, and places it in word two. And so word two equals mountain. There's a few other that's, that you might find useful. One is trim, in which we might have the user enter a string, and oftentimes they might put a space after it, or maybe a space before. We want to get rid of those spaces. So I have a string here called ABC equals space, 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 hello world, exclamation, space, space, space. So I can say string ABC trimmed. So ABC trimmed is a string variable equals campus. And I can call the trim method, which gets rid of the spaces before and after that string. So any preceding spaces, any trailing spaces. And the result is ABC trimmed equals hello world with no spaces in front or behind does not get rid of the space between the two words it's only starting spaces and ending spaces there's also a trim end and a trim start which do exactly what they sound like so here is string abc start trimmed so campus dot trim start gets rid of the spaces before the string so any any preceding spaces but it leaves the trailing spaces and of course, trim end does the same thing. It would, it would remove the trailing spaces, but leave the preceding spaces. In one of the next videos, we'll look at pad left and pad right in terms of doing some formatting and putting uh, items into columns. Pad left and pad right simply put characters in front of a string or after a string. So pad left will put characters in front of a string. Pad right puts them after the string to a certain width. And the key here, generally when you're using these things, you probably want some type of control, um, output control that is, that its font is set to a model-based font, such as Courier New, where 
every character takes up the same amount of space. And that allows us to put things in nice columns. We'll see that uh, in, a, in a very near video. But as an example, if I have word A as a string value equals SMCC, word B equals word A dot pad left, and I'm going to say 10 spaces, 10, 10 characters. And so this is going to put word A um, in another string, and it's going to put additional spaces in front of that. So word B in this case is a string of six spaces and then the four letters of SMCC for a total of 10. I can also specify which character I want if I don't want spaces. So word C equals word A dot pad left. Again, I want a width of 10, but the character, notice this is in single quotes, because this is a char value, not a string value. The character I want is a period. So now I'm gonna get six periods and the letters SMCC. By the same token, we can pad to the right. And so here, word A dot pad right, 10 characters. Again, with specifying a character of a period, where D would equal SMCC and six periods. A few other methods we'll look at down the road as we get into arrays and we get into doing some more formatting. String dot format, split, uh, two char, and string compare. So we'll look at those down the road. So that's an overview of methods and properties that are in the string class.